Do you know that one out of every nine individuals over the age of 65 has Alzheimer's dementia? The frequency increases exponentially by decade, and there are over five and a half million people with Alzheimer's disease currently in the U.S., and that will reach over 20 million by 2030. The current costs over $200 billion a year, and if left untreated, it will reach over a trillion by 2050. So this is a healthcare tsunami as well as an economic one. And do you know that women are at twice the risk for Alzheimer's disease? And it is not only because women live longer. So maintaining intact memory function is one of the primary public health challenges of our lifetime. Now, sex differences in memory function actually exist across the lifespan. And here you can see that women have a slight advantage in memory function, that is memory for words, verbal memory function over men, even beginning at age 30. In fact, sex differences in memory function actually emerge just post puberty and are retained over the lifespan, even though they attenuate with menopause, in the healthy brain in women, we still retain an advantage. So why is it that women are at twice the risk for Alzheimer's disease if we have an advantage across the lifespan in memory function? First, it is important to know that there are sex differences that are pervasive across the human brain. And these sex differences actually emerge and originate in fetal development. So although sex differences in the brain are pervasive, they don't occur in every brain region. And some of the largest sex differences in size of structures and function are in memory circuitry. So understanding how these regions develop differently in the male and female brain and how they change in age over the lifespan will be important for understanding why it is that women are at twice the risk for Alzheimer's disease. Now, one of the reasons uh, that we think women are at higher risk for Alzheimer's disease is due to the fact that there are shared brain regions between memory performance, memory function, and hormones like gonadal hormones. Some of the same brain regions that regulate memory, like the hypothalamus, like the hippocampus, are key brain regions that also regulate the release of gonadal hormones estrogens from the ovaries in women, where estradiol is the primary estrogen that drives brain function, and testosterone in men. And with loss of ovarian function, that is lowering of estradiol, we have found this is associated with, with uh, changes and loss in memory function. There are also sex differences in the risk for the genes associated with Alzheimer's disease. So one of the primary genetic risks for Alzheimer's is the A polypoprotein E or APOE and its E4 allele. And some people have found there are sex differences in the expression of the E4 allele. There's also sex differences in Alzheimer's primary pathology, that is the neuritic plaques, the amyloid or tangles. And in fact, some people have found that there's greater Alzheimer's pathology in postmenopausal women compared with men, even given the same genetic abnormality in the APOE E4 allele. And this may in part be due to the fact that estradiol reduces plaque formation, can reduce amyloid formation and accumulation, so that the loss of estradiol with ovarian um, decline in menopause may reveal which women may be at higher risk for Alzheimer's disease later in life. There are also sex differences in our immune system that impact Alzheimer's risk. And we know now that our immune system is very important in attacking some of the pathology that's associated with Alzheimer's disease. And the sex differences in the immune system exist both in our innate immunity, our first line of defense, as well as our adaptive immunity, how we acquire immunity from things like exposure to vaccines. And finally, there are diseases that we know are independent risk factors for Alzheimer's risk later in life. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, anxiety disorders, and all of these disorders also express sex differences in their frequency. 
and therefore we believe there's shared causes between sex differences in those diseases and why we see sex differences in Alzheimer's risk. What can we do now? Effortful cognitive activity, challenging our brain with new and novel tasks will help to maintain intact memory function. Effortful physical activity, we know that physical activity is actually associated with generating new nerve cells in a brain region that's really key for memory function, the hippocampus. And also social contact. We know that social contact is also significantly associated with maintaining memory function and that isolation has been associated with memory decline. And we also know that there are sex differences that exist across these three domains. So understanding these sex differences will be key for the development of novel therapeutics that will be more efficacious in our treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Now we have no successful treatments as yet for Alzheimer's disease. In fact, the field has focused first on clinical dementia and then on mild cognitive impairment. But the field believes now that we really need to be targeting early, prior to symptom formation in the preclinical period. This is the period of ages 45 to 65 where we know that that is for women the menopausal transition. So we believe we need to understand the trajectory of memory decline by sex in order to intervene early and to know who to target to treat early in order to attenuate disability or hopefully prevent the illness later in midlife. Now in this day and age of precision medicine or personalized medicine, then what can be more personal than one's sex? So when we ask the question of therapeutics for the brain to help maintain intact memory function, yes, sex matters.